like such as this video comment from Tristan. This one, guys, is for all you Canadian haters out there. Woohoo! Everyone? So Canada everybody. has its own Shamima Begum situation brewing, but our court system has returned a sensible verdict on the subject. Four Canadians travel to Syria, then there's a gap in the story, then they turn up as prisoners of the Kurds for being ISIS associates, and they are demanding that the Canadian government intervene and bring them back to Canada. Justice Stratus, an appellate judge, returned a decision that the Canadian Charter should not be interpreted so loosely as to compel the federal government to facilitate the repatriation of four suspected ISIS volunteers after Global Affairs clearly advised travelers not to go to Syria and that the government would not help them if they did. As Stratus stated, repatriation is a complicated process that means government officials need to travel through dangerous territory where their safety cannot be guaranteed. In light of this, I call upon the Honorable Melanie Jolie, Minister of Foreign Affairs, to travel to Syria and not return until these four unjustly imprisoned Canadians are returned home safely. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was a highlight there at the bottom. Mm, oh, chef's kiss. Well, well done, Stress, and that uh, as always, an excellent video call. And this one might actually be able to get uploaded to YouTube. Oh, dear. That interesting development that uh, you know, one of the courts, although it would be interesting to see if it gets appealed and overturned by less than favorable courts is ruling against this, although there's also that part of me that's like, is it simply because it's favoring the safety of a government officials? I, I won't be surprised if that's what it is, because Canada's been quite clear that they do not give a shit about the safety of their citizens. Yeah. Oh god, of course they don't. They think their, their citizens are property as far as they're concerned. <laughs> yep. And they don't even have the decency to keep them fed and housed. Nope. I'll run you over with a horse, though. <laughs> Especially if you're a grandma. Yes. Oh, yeah. And they'll even back over and do it again. <clears throat> no, me. they'll just send a second horse. A pot, uh, make it a pale horse, actually. All the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't put grandma together again? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I was going more along the... Uh, Behold a pale horse and its rider is death. <laughs> Although, in this case, it's legal system in Canada. Yes. Or made. <laughs> I mean, at this point, death must, do like, must be seen. They're going, like, come the fuck on. I'm supposed to be busy in Africa taking children. Can you stop <laughs> killing f perfectly fine adults? <laughs> uh. Calendar's booked up, and Justin, you just keep screwing it up. Exactly. Like... The I've got the list, the three fakes have given me the list, and I know exactly when this is supposed to happen, and you're fucking with it. <laughs> <laughs> He's making a list, checking it twice. He's going to see if you're naughty or nice. Santa Besic is coming to town. Yes, so though Santa apparently Besic I... Santa is death. Uh, Santa Besic is apparently <laughs> Santa from Futurama. <laughs> <laughs> He's coming with a... Slade drawn by kangaroos and a Tommy gun. <laughs> <laughs> har <Yar -har>, cunts! <laughs> Callum's like, Africa, what about China? Ah, the Chinese aren't people. <laughs> they don't go to the afterlife. <laughs> <laughs> well, hold on. Stop. Hold on a second. No, no, no. That's right. The Chinese don't get to actually go to the afterlife because the government banned reincarnation. <laughs> you you sn you snort arc at that Arden, but that's actually true. They made it illegal to reincarnate yeah, with I, that I, government I, permission. Yeah, I'm not surprised. If it was if it was Canada, you'd have to have a permit. <laughs> <laughs> Got a license for that reincarnation, mate. <laughs> <laughs> I don't... It's like the BBC like television license. <laughs> uh, and also I still contend that the last thing any politician in Canada should have added to, before their name is the word honorable <laughs> yeah the dishonorable <laughs> yeah yes we should send all the leaders of the World Economic Forum to 
shit fucker stand to get back those four Canadians. Yeah. You know, I think every politician of the world, especially part of the, uh, you know, World Economic Forum, should definitely, you know, do that. Yeah. So they Trist should all go there. Tristan was good enough to include the article with his video comment submission. Which is something you can do with us, unlike other inferior competing podcasts. <laughs> I, I'm just doing a nose analysis. Uh, what? I'm on, not impressed. On the dishonorable. Yes. Oh, yeah. you need to see a profile shot of her. <laughs> I, I have, actually. I'm, I'm looking that up actively yeah. as we speak. It's like, well, yeah. actually. If, if oh, she, she had one of those the on the back of her head. Nose. Yeah, if she had one of those on the back of like she's got in the front, she'd make an excellent pick. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. So the judge dismissed the argument. He also took aim at two decades of judicial activism and loose interpretation of the charter. <laughs> loose interpretation of the charter. You can still read that thing after Trudeau's been wiping his ass with it for the last three years? It was like the only line that wasn't covered in brown. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, what was that? Protect government officials from stupid people who've gone to Syria? <laughs> yeah. uh, oh, the decision was endorsed by Federal Court of Appeal justices, but it is clearly just a strike of misgivings on the top court's recent trajectory that informs it. So four idiots went to some shithole and are now acting shocked that they got detained in the said shithole. Yes, it is a white pill. The court did something that wasn't completely retarded. <laughs> You notice how they don't name the men, yes. but they named Michael Spavor and uh, the other Michael immediately when they were taken. Mm. Hmm. It's almost uh, as uh, if the they Kurds... probably also think that they're terrorists. Yeah. Hmm. Well, they're, if, they're if you scroll down their uh... <laughs> Yeah, the, the, the Kurds apparently are trying to send people back. Mm. Uh, just, just under that, those two pictures oh, yeah. right there. Kurds have been encouraging foreign states to repatriate their nationals, and Canada has done so on previous occasions. But Stratus uh, des described in his judgment that it was a complicated process that means government officials need to travel through dangerous territories. Okay, so that, to me, that that's more, we're more worried about the safety our of people some government rather shit than on, yeah. the citizens. Yeah, it's... Yeah. So, yeah, apparently he's also taking a look at another federal court decision. He took the right of Canadian citizens to enter Canada and transformed that into arrived Canadian citizens, wherever they might be, regardless of their conduct abroad, to return to Canada or have their government take steps to rescue them. Yeah, no, if you go to some shithole and then get into shithole-related problems, well, that's your fucking fault. If, the, if, if we decide to go get you, be fucking grateful. Well, yeah, this I, is I'm the, reminded the of... Communist. Oh, go ahead, please, sure. I, I, I'm, I'm reminded of... The uh, it was a night late nineties. The guy that went to I think it was Indonesia or Singapore and got caned, an American citizen. <laughs> and our State Department was like, "Well, we'd rather you don't, but yeah. it's your legal system." And it's like, yeah. how things have changed since then. Mm -hmm. When you have actual terrorists having government intervention to rescue them, where at the time it's like, "Well, we'd prefer you don't, but if you have to because of your laws, it it's upon him." Yeah, so. also, yeah, it's pr probably for the best. Maybe he'll behave when he comes back. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, one of the issues with yeah, no, I was, this policy... I was going to say that it's like the Marxist communist government here has become such a nanny state that they actually want to reach out and bring their babies back. Which is funny, because well, yeah. don't they restrict the amount of their babies that could come back for three years? <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I, I'd actually liken this more akin to uh, like like a child who has had their toys being played with with other children, and now are like snatching them back and running mm -hmm. and hiding, <laughs> taking That's their the ball and Yeah, hard to exactly. Yeah, good old oh, nanny stites. I'm going home. <laughs> uh, I, I do something similar every time I'm out of my city, like every time we're driving back. We come to a stupid o overpass that says "Welcome back to city," or rather, or wel rather, "Welcome to city." I'm like, ah, oh, fuck, god, fucking shit, god damn it! <laughs> <laughs> Don't want to come back here. It's a shit hole. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
And to be fair, it is a shithole because the primary occupation is welfare. Ew. Oh. Hmm. So, so you're living in Baltimore, Australia. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but with more Somalis, Indians. Ah, oh, well. well, that's because uh, Baltimore drives the Somalis out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's too violent for them. <laughs> Shit, when it's too violent for the Somalis, that's when you know it's serious. <laughs> yeah. That's why they come to Norway instead. They can do their machete thing here and it won't be much. <laughs> they, they won't get shot for wielding a machete in the street. <laughs> oh, well, you never, know, you never know when those Swedish gangs might come over with their newly acquired <laughs> AK-47s and modern assault rifles and rocket launchers that the fucking Ukrainians have been selling to them. <laughs> and grenades don't forget the grenades yeah i mean it's pretty funny because uh a few months ago the police have started uh, to always carry firearms That's what diversity Norway, is your so. strength yes but don't, don't think don't th don't look at the policeman who is now armed to the teeth don't don't think about policemen diversity is strength but don't mind the policeman <laughs> Well, I've come, I've come to a new opinion on that, thanks to a mate of mine. It's illegal for a civilian to carry a gun in public, so the police don't need them either. <laughs> what, what do they need to be protected from? Point. There's no, our, Australia has the, is the gold example of gun regulation, so why do our police need guns? If the, gun, if the weapons regulations are working so well, why do the police need guns? Probably then they're evil white supremacists. Oh, um, we'll come back oh, to... Oh, like the, the guy that did a van attack here in D.C. last week. <laughs> You're going to have to narrow that down. Which one? Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, the white supremacist from, like, India? You're going to have to narrow <laughs> that down. <laughs> what? Oh, what sorry. Did... I'm... Hey, Bleach, what did the oh, the YouTube, new YouTube boss do? Oh, with just, like, yesterday? Made, made it possible to uh, speak about... <laughs> the 2020 election, or to call his fellow citizens white supremacists. Of course. And <laughs> not, not a Robert cat. Detroit down under. <laughs> <laughs> he come uh, from Detroit down under. <laughs> imagine an entire country that's basically California. Oh. Ooh. So, filled with Canada? obnoxious surfer dudes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. When you throw the surfer dudes in, it kind of disqualifies the Great White North. <laughs> uh, sadly, we do have obnoxious surfer dudes. Totally rad, bro. You know, on the, the Outer Banks of North Carolina, they had a rash of basically surfer hobos who would Break What's into people's outdoor showers to take shits. Oh, for fuck's sake. Uh -huh. uh, un until some of the, the homeowners were down there for maintenance and chased them off with shotguns. Beist. If you have a problem, use shotgun. If that is not enough, use more shotgun. Because, um, yeah, when I it's like, question. hey, bro. For hobo, can't you just crap in the ocean? <laughs> you would think, but they don't You'd want to. You'd think so. Oh, God. <laughs> They, they'll shit in someone's shower, and, but they won't go out and take a shit in the ocean. Uh, yeah, the ocean needs to be clean, bro. Well, it's all the microplastics in their shit. <laughs> all that brown cream and shit. Uh -huh. <laughs> Marcus asks a, an excellent question. How long until tanks from Ukraine start popping up in Mexico? <laughs> Do you know when the next grain shipment to Mexico is from Ukraine? <laughs> yeah. That'd be interesting. Uh, the cartels will be running around with like yeah, M1 Abrams tanks, thanks to the U.S. government. Yeah. Maybe a Leopard two. <laughs> oh dear. Come on, man. We we need our our medicinal M1 Abrams, man. To to be. To be fair, I could use an emotional support tank. Same. Especially when I'm especially tank. when I drive through downtown. 
<laughs> oh, yes. Oh, See, I, I want an emotional support Davy Crockett. <laughs> so I don't have to worry about town. No. <laughs> yeah, but you, you, it's... You can't exactly drive through a climate tide protest with a Davy Crockett. They're too stupid to know what it is. Yes, you can. But when you drive the tank yes, through can. it... <laughs> Explain. No, no. I mean, ta tactical nukes have their place on the battlefield. When uh, yes, someone's protesting in the street, you get rid of the street. No more protest. <laughs> <laughs> or you could just do it like the Brits do, just throw them in, a, in traffic. Let let uh, nature's take its course. No, they, what the what the Brits do is they put them in traffic and then they beat the drivers if they try to go around them. Oh, <laughs> okay. Just do what they did, but then just let the uh, then reward the drivers for doing God's work. I, really, what you need, strangely enough, is the French solution if you're going that way, where they just haul them off the street and throw them around. Uh, what? Yes. It was the Germans who were for a change and fathomably based and gr took the guys who glued themselves to the road and just gone yoink. Oh, I remember, yeah, I was, kicked him under the armpit. That was glorious. <laughs> yeah. It's like, fuck you, you're not attached to the ground anymore. Get in the van. <laughs> <laughs> but my hand's missing. <laughs> it's not attached to... <laughs> it's not your hand anymore. I mean, that's still nicer <laughs> than I would have been. I would have cut it off the hand off at the wrist and left it as a warning to the next dickhead. Hmm. Yeah. Plus, I have no problem with wildlife that way. <laughs> Probably best not to do that in the middle of the highway. I might learn. <laughs> <laughs> we like wildlife. <sighs> Except for seagulls. Seagulls don't deserve to live. Well, do they they're, they're not animals. Themselves? They're demons spawned from hell. Very true. If you enjoyed this segment from the Sons of Chardelet podcast, please consider joining us live exclusively on rumble.com slash C slash Sons of Chardelet. A special thanks to our subscribe star supporters who you can currently see scrolling past on your screen.